Time now for sports news. Here's Charles Oruka. Welcome to Sports News. Nigeria internationals Kelechi Hanacho and Alex Iwobi have been shortlisted for the 2016 edition of the Golden Boy Award. Ihanacho, who recently became the first Nigerian to score in the Manchester Derby, scored 10 goals in the 2015-2016 season and has three so far this season. Iwobi got into the Arsenal first team last season, scoring two goals, and has become a regular for the Gunners this season. The Golden Boy Award is meant for the best player under the age of 21 to play in a European nation's top division. Back home, Governor Rochas Okorocha has fulfilled his promise of giving each Imo state-born athlete at the just-concluded Rio Paralympics the sum of one million naira. Governor Okorocha, who was represented by the Chief of Staff, Uche Umosu, commended the athletes for, giving such a, for achieving such a feat in Rio adding that they've made Nigeria proud. The athletes were presented with the money at the State House in Oweri, along with a brand new car and the piece of land each. And today, what can we say than to thank God for giving us men and women like you? With a plot of land in Oweri, city, capital, congratulations. Thank you. Everybody wants to be Imo, Imo State athlete now. But we did not stay in the primary school like other athletes. We were in a hotel and we are eating and we enjoyed. And that will make us to be in this height we are now. Ugumba one, we bless you. God bless you the more. And God bless Imo State. Now in football administration, a vice president of the Confederation of African Football, Almami Kamara, and the president of the Ghana Football Association, Kwesin Yantaki, have been elected into the FIFA Council. The duo were elected at today's extraordinary CAF General Assembly in Cairo. Guinea and Kamara polled 37 votes, Yantaki got 31, while Madagascar's Ahmad scored 30, and Senegal's Augustin Senghor brought up the rear with only nine votes. Kamara Nyantake will serve in the position until March the 17th, 2017, when they face a re-election at the CAF Congress in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Because Africa has a very, very important role in football. And this, I was saying it during my campaign, you know that, but it shouldn't be only words. Because many people are saying this and have said this. We have to move from the words to the action. And we have to give Africa, of course, the place it deserves in world football. The place it deserves for everything that Africa is doing for world football. For all the talents which are playing everywhere in the world, in Europe, in Asia, in America, everywhere. Well, that's it on sports news. Back to Amarachi with the rest of the news at 10. Away from sports news, human rights group Amnesty International says dozens of children in Sudan have become victims of chemical weapons used against them by their own government. Its findings span from January and shows that children are among 200 people estimated to have been killed. Sudan's ambassador to the UN, Omar Mohammed, has denied the claim, saying they are baseless and fabricated. Amnesty International's Director of Crisis Research, Tirana Hassan, says her team used satellite imagery, conducted more than 200 interviews, and obtained expert analysis of images showing injuries to conduct their research. We gave all of the evidence that Amnesty International's collected to two independent experts who viewed the, the evidence and said that there is credible evidence that there has been the use of some sort of chemical agent and in particular there is a high possibility of the use of a vesicant or a blistering agent such as a lewisite or sulfur mustard gas. 
Sudan joined the Chemical Weapons Convention in 1999, under which members agreed to never use toxic arms. It's a global standard that chemical weapon agents should never ever be used in conflict. They are a war crime and those who use chemical weapons against civilians must be held to account. A joint African Union United Nations force known as UNAMID has been stationed in Darfur since 2007, but security remains fragile in Darfur where mainly non-Arab tribes have been fighting the Arab-led government in Khartoum. The only difference between 2004 and what is happening in Darfur today is the world has stopped watching. The abuses which are being perpetuated by the Sudanese government on the civilian population are as bad as they were in 2004. And we need to have the sort of international engagement on Sudan that the, the level of this crisis actually requires. Some 300,000 people have been killed in Darfur since the conflict began in 2003, while 4.4 million people need aid and more than 2.5 million have been displaced. The International Criminal Court issued arrest warrants for Sudanese President Omar Hassan al-Bashir in 2009 and 2010 on charges of war crimes and genocide in his drive to crush the Darfur revolt. But al-Bashir has been able to evade arrest all these years. The Indian Army says it has carried out surgical strikes against suspected militants along the de facto border with Pakistan in Kashmir. A senior army official says the operation was aimed at preventing attacks being planned by Pakistan-based militants. The army claims significant casualties have been caused to the terrorists and those who are trying to support them. However, Pakistan denies India carried out any strikes and says those uh, two of its soldiers were killed in cross-border shelling. And the main news again, the APC candidates, Godwin Obasaki, today emerged winner of the Edo State Governorship election. In his acceptance speech, Mr. Obasaki pledged to work with everyone, irrespective of party affiliation. Also today, the PDP candidates in the Edo State Governorship election, Osage Ize Iyamu, rejected poll results, saying the outcome was not a true reflection of the voting pattern. And Amnesty International today accused the Sudanese armed forces of using chemical weapons in Darfur, resulting in the deaths of several children. That's News at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.